Uh, in 2014 and 2015, I chaired the task force on shale gas, and we concluded our work at the end of 2015. I should also, of course, mention that I was chairman of the Environment Agency until September 2014. In the task force, we looked very carefully at the economic and environmental implications of the development of a shale gas industry in the UK. And there are five especially important points that I would like to make arising out of our work. First, we will need gas as part of our energy mix in this country for several decades to come. Yes, of course, we must uh, develop renewables. Yes, we must build a new generation of nuclear power stations, though not necessarily on the model that the government appear to be determined to take forward. But these can't be deployed in a hurry. They'll take time. We will need gas as an interim fuel to take us towards a lower carbon future. And let's not forget also, this is not just about energy generation, 80% of all our households depend on gas for their cooking and heating. That is not going to change overnight. <coughs> Second, gas is better than coal. The industrial emissions and greenhouse gas effects of burning gas are something like half of those of burning unabated coal. Now, we're rightly, in this country, running down our coal-burning capacity to generate electricity at the moment. I trust this will be one of the developments that doesn't uh, uh, fall foul of the Brexit changes. But gas has to be part of the solution to doing so. Along, I would add, with carbon capture and storage, especially for gas, which will become increasingly important, and I'm dismayed at the government's decision to abandon the fund that had been specifically earmarked for the development of large-scale pilot projects of CCS. It was very short-sighted of them to do so, and it's denying us both an early environmental benefit and a first-mover economic advantage with carbon capture. Third, local environmental protection at a shale gas site is imperative. There are four things that are crucial for this. Rigorous regulation, monitoring and inspection. This is largely in place at the moment, but uh, the noble Lord Lord Mayor is absolutely right to point to the issue of necessary resource for regulation, monitoring and inspection if a shale gas industry develops at scale. Secondly, there should be local community participation in that monitoring and inspecting process. That ultimately will be the way to secure agreement and acceptance from local communities. Thirdly, again as the noble Lord Lord Mayor said, absolute well integrity independently overseen is crucial. It was failures of well integrity it, that caused problems in some of the early buccaneering days in the United States, now long since over. And fourthly, mandatory green completion to ensure that all gases, especially methane, are captured when they rise to uh, the surface, must be put in place. With these clear conditions in place, shale gas extraction can be done safely. Regulatory corners, however, cannot and must not be cut in the process. And fourthly, it makes economic and environmental sense to produce gas domestically rather than to ship it halfway across the world. Taking gas out of the ground in Qatar, liquefying it, shipping it to the UK, deliquefying it, 
and then delivering it to power stations and households, has a far higher carbon and climate change footprint than sourcing it here in the UK. The climate change impact of not having a domestic gas resource will be worse than that of having one. Fifth, the development of a shale gas industry in the UK must not, however, be allowed to have a chilling effect on the development of renewables and our preparation for a low carbon future. Shale gas can and should only be an interim energy response. It's not a long-term answer. And to ensure this, I would propose that all government revenues coming specifically from a developed shale gas industry should be earmarked for investment in research and development and innovation in renewables, carbon capture and storage, and low carbon energy generation, storage and distribution. That way, we will have an energy policy fit for the longer term future.